Are you a fan of traditional turn-based strategy RPGs? You know, those games like Final Fantasy Tactics, with named characters who join up with you with special abilities, as well as other NPC-type characters that you can grab at the guild and fight with? Well, what if I told you that you can play a game just like that, available now digitally and then later on physically for the Nintendo Switch? It's called Goblin Slayer Another Adventure and Nightmare Feast, and in today's sponsored video I do want to tell you all about it, and I do think that that is worth a sub as I try my hardest to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And with your help, your like, and your sub, I do know that I can get there. So now, let me dive deep into this light-hearted anime turn-based tactical adventure. So there are a couple of things that I do want to let you know. First of all, I've never in my life watched the Goblin Slayer anime. In fact, I've never even heard of it until I was asked to perform this review. And with that being said, I can let you know that I understood the storyline perfectly, so you do not need to have watched the animated television show in order to understand the events or the characters of this game. However, if you are a fan of the anime, then this is definitely right up your alley, because the game was created by the same creators of the television show. The original series creator Kubo Kagyu is in charge of the storyline, well, the main character designs are being handled by Noburu Katnatsuki, who has also worked in the original series. Not only that, but it features a Japanese dub from famous voice actors and an English localization, though there is no English voice acting. The game tells its own unique original story, taking place within the four-cornered world. But, like I said before, it takes place outside the events of the animated series. And it follows a nameless girl, only known as the Guildmaster. Surprisingly enough, the vast majority of the characters don't have names here, even if they're like really important to the storyline, like her own childhood friend is just called Squire, and the weirdo lesbianic vampire chick is just called the Blood Princess. Though I will say this, there's some random girl selling ice and she has a name, Conan, like Conan the Barbarian, though she's just a young girl. It's kind of odd and it just stood out to me, so I thought that I'd point it out because it just made me laugh. But anyway, back to the storyline because it's actually quite good and it is told in a visual novel format. You play as a young noblewoman who's left the capital to go back to her hometown after her father passed away to take his place as the head of the Adventurer's Guild. So it's your job to complete tasks, help with the townsfolk, and of course, meet colorful characters along the way. Eventually, though, you learn of an ancient artifact rumored to possess the power of resurrecting the dead. But, as you can imagine, a lot of people want to get their hands on it, especially because the evil Dark Lord was only killed a scant ten years prior, and some of his minions still roam the land. So, will she and her lovable band of misfits be able to uncover the secrets of the artifact, as well as keep it safe from the minions of the Dark Lord? You're going to find out here. Now, that story really is interesting, but what I think kind of drives it home is that rather than being one of those strategy RPGs that takes itself so super seriously with high political intrigue, backstabbing, murder, politics, and poisoning, this instead does not take itself seriously at all. The characters are constantly telling jokes and poking around at one another and getting into random weirdo hijinks. And it's always fun to see who you're going to be coming across next. I also do think that it's definitely worth mentioning how large the text is here, and I can totally appreciate that. Back whenever I was a kid on the NES and the SNES, whenever I would speak to an NPC, the text took up like a good third of the screen, so it was so easy to read. Nowadays though, you have to pull out your electron microscope in order to actually read the text on screen. It's really kind of obnoxious and ridiculous. So I for one applaud the developers for this large text, because I'm an old bitch and I need it. Between all the zany animated hijinks, there are tactical turn-based battles in the same vein as Tactics Ogre, as well as the aforementioned Final Fantasy Tactics. Only it's simpler, because each character is locked into their one particular job class. You have your named characters, such as the Vampiric Blood Princess who uses dark magic, the Polar Bear Priest who acts as your cleric, your childhood friend Squire who's pretty much like a monk type character, and Conan who looks bizarrely like the Prince of Canoc. She's kind of like a lancer with a spear and attack magic. But if you think that that's all, you are sorely mistaken, because you can go on into the guild and recruit all sorts of other characters, from archers to wizards to dwarves and beast warriors and elves, you name it, you can recruit them here. And each character has their own strengths and weaknesses, and unlike a lot of tactical RPGs, you can control a bunch of party members at once, instead of just bringing in like maybe four or five, you'll be controlling like 7 or 10 characters in battle, 
ensuring that you can utilize whatever party combinations that your heart desires. Another cool, unique thing that you can do before battles is place traps around the field. If you notice like a particular bottleneck on the battlefield, you might want to set up a fence there so the enemies can't go past it and they'll have to go around. Or maybe set up like a bear trap to inflict some damage and slow them down. It's a really fun and strategic addition to an already involved battle system. The turn-based battles are super quick and fun, with fast forwarding available as well as the ability to just like skip an enemy's turn entirely so you don't have to watch it unfold. And because everybody gains the same amount of experience after battles, you don't have to worry if one particular character can't get an attack off on their turn. They will still gain just as much experience as everybody else. There's also no permadeath, thank God. If a character does die during battle, they'll just gain half the experience points as everybody else and have no other penalties. Also, I should mention that there is a normal and a casual difficulty mode depending on your playstyle and your mood, since you can change that difficulty level at any time that you would like. As you might come to expect, certain attacks have certain ranges, like magic which can reach quite a bit across the field, or spears hitting two places in front of you, or arrows which can just soar right across the whole thing, while other attacks are more up close and personal. But even if your characters don't have access to magic, they will still have access to special arts, further differentiating each character. Then, kind of like in Fire Emblem, once you reach a certain level, you'll be able to promote units further enhancing them and powering them up and letting them learn even more skills. In between battling and exposition, you have your main hub, the guild, I mean, you are the guild master after all, and here you can outfit all of your characters, recruit new adventurers into your party, upgrade and promote units, and most importantly, take on quests. This here is the meat and potatoes of Goblin Slayer, as you have your main storyline quests, which will move you on to the next chapter once you complete them, but there's all sorts of other quests that you can partake in as well such as your basic repeatable grinding quests just in case you like need to level up or something, or interlude quests, which give storyline and exposition in addition to some pretty sweet rewards. Then there's just the normal quests, which you undertake for battling and new equipment and rewards and whatnot, and once you complete a certain amount of normal quests, you'll be able to take on the main quest, which will move you on into the next chapter. To be quite honest, when I first picked up this game, I wasn't expecting all that much but what I found was a really cool throwback experience, reminiscent of those glory days of the PlayStation 1 strategy RPGs that I adored as a teenager, as well as a nice casual pick up and play experience, because this game's just really relaxing to turn on, play through a couple of the side quests here and there, watch some of the jokes, have a good laugh. It's kind of like a nice palate cleanser between the bigger releases. So if you think this is something that you'll like, be sure to check it out. And if you'd like to order it digitally on the Nintendo eShop, it is currently 20% off until the 21st of November. But please also do keep in mind that there are physical editions of the game out there that you can pick up as well, and I do have links to all of those included below. There's even a collector's edition too, which is the only way that you can get the exclusive Sword Maiden DLC because it's not available for purchase on its own, and I did just want to make you aware of that. So that's it for my review of Goblin Slayer Another Adventure Nightmare Feast. It's a mouthful, and it is for the Nintendo Switch, but it is a joy to play. And if you like this video, here's another video that I really do think that you're going to enjoy. So please do check it out, and as always, have a good day.